Physicists and mathematicians and spiritualists all believe the possibility that many more dimensions exist. According to string theory, the physical universe operates within 10 dimensions. So I have my own belief on that. I think it's actually 12 dimensions of physicality within the incarnational cycle of this galaxy. But they're even trying to figuring it out now, right? Mainstream science is saying what metaphysics, metaphysicists have been saying for thousand plus years. And there are also different types of dimensions. Dimension is such a broad word that when somebody says to me, what is a dimension? Unless I have an opportunity to show them 20 minutes of slides, I really can't just explain it in one component because what dimension are you talking about? What kind of dimension are you talking about? It's used for many overlapping and seemingly independent concepts. For example, we have parallel dimensions. We have physical dimensions of this of this reality, of this timeline. We have spiritual dimensions. We have dimensions in the galaxy. We have realms of no dimensions at all. We have the void. We have a dimension within a dimension. These are different components that have been thrown out there as possibilities of existing. So just to say the word dimension isn't really explanatory. When most of what I'm going to be talking about today, except for the part when we get into time travel, which is going to be interesting, but what most of them are expressing today are dimensions with are probably really the 12 dimensions, including the 13th, which is the void of different experiences that we can incarnate into and tap into within our own galaxy. So it is important to realize that these concepts and titles may have been spiritually informed, but are also human constructs based on perception and unique experience on earth. If we did not exist on earth, if earth didn't exist at all and humans didn't exist, Dimensions, parallel realities, physical, spiritual, um, the void, the black hole in the center of a galaxy, all of those things will still be there, right? Now, well, I guess it depends on who you ask. It's all about if the tree falls in the forest, does anybody hear it, right? But um, all of those things would really still be there because if we weren't here right now, Earth just vanished, it would still be there. So when we're calling fourth, third, second, first dimension, uh, astral reality, uh, parallel dimension, Every one of those terms are all human constructs, human words designed to explain universal concepts that would exist whether we have the words to explain them or not. So it's important to do that because otherwise you can label and identify it with things too much by saying like fifth dimension or something like that. Whereas that's just a human construct as well. And it's great because we give the labels to the things that we want to, but knowing that we've also imposed these constructs on it and made it into a hierarchy and all this stuff is a good thing to know moving forward. So we're going to get into the Milky Way galaxy in just a moment here, but just a little detour before we do that. And this, I actually just added this about, um, let me see how long ago, like an hour and a half ago, I added this part to this presentation because I really wanted to explore the concept of time travel a little bit. Time travel. Well, we have now found out that as we go closer to the speed of light, time begins to warp and it seems to slow down for that individual object. If I was standing somewhere in the middle of some stadium and you were going around me at light speed travel and you went around me for years, what seemed like years for me, chances are, you would stop traveling and you would be the same age or just a tiny bit older than the moment you started. But I'll be, say that you've been driving around me for 10 years, I'll be 10 years older, right? So when, when you go closer and closer to the speed of light, time begins to slow down. And the, um, the belief is when you get to the speed of light, time stops. So if you're able to travel at the speed of light, it may take you years, but you would not age. That is one of the theories. Theoretically, at the speed of light, time stops because you're traveling at the same speed as the light. So if time is just a reflection of the light that comes to my eyes and the distance that it traveled, if I'm traveling at the same speed as the light, I'm traveling at the same speed that the time is, is basically going forward. So the theory is that we would not age. And then also time travel, there are theories that bending space-time. If we're able to bend space and time somehow, create some sort of device, we can actually jump ahead in distance within our universe and actually go forward and um, back in time. 
and also wormholes traveling through wormholes ftl travel which is faster than light travel and then going through parallel dimensions in order to go time these are some of the theories of ways that we can have time travel and then some other components of what is believed to maybe happen if we were to time travel so let's be theoretical right now let's just say that we were able to time travel and what would happen it, so here are a few different scenarios that I outlined that are theories of what could actually occur during a time travel moment. So you can go back in time to this timeline right here, right now, right? So you're in this timeline right here, and I go back to the same timeline that I'm in, and I make a change that changes this moment that I'm in right now. So I go back in time, and then all of a sudden, the, when I go back to this time right here, the moment has been changed and everything shifts. This is very similar. Actually, this is the one from Back to the Future, basically. This is like, okay, I go back in time, uh, made an, uh, a mistake. Biff got the magazine with all the sports um, numbers in it for the next decade or whatever, becomes rich. I go back into my future. He's married my mom, right? <laughs> that was uh, Back to the Future. And he's rich and he hates me. So that, like, that is the one from back to the future right there. And then another one is when you can go back in time, you can actually jump into another parallel timeline and it does not affect the past of your current time. So if you went back in time right now from this moment here, instead of going back to the same timeline, it's not possible. All parallel realities, all parallel dimensions exist simultaneously. So the moment that you're traveling back to is actually existing right now. So you move back to a different timeline that then has a whole different outcome, but you don't actually affect the timeline you came from. The timeline you came from is missing you because you've gone now. When you go back in time, you go to the, his number three. When you go back in time, you go to the same timeline, but when you make a change, it breaks off into a new timeline. And then there are now two distinct timelines from the original timeline. So you can go back in time right now and you do not do anything different. You just like hang out, you watch, and then you come back and everything's fine. But you go back in time and then you maybe stop something from happening. Then when you come back in time, you don't go back to your same timeline. You go back to a parallel timeline that you've just created. That's theory number three. And then if we were to go faster than light, theoretically, we're able to go back in time. So if we go as fast as the speed of light, now we are at the same speed of time. But if we go faster than the speed of light, technically time should start reversing. And that's what happens when we have black holes and wormholes where time bends, light bends. A great example of time travel is the fact that the sunlight from our sun takes eight minutes and 20 seconds to arrive at our eyes, which means that we're seeing the sun how it was about eight minutes ago. So time travel is happening all the time. If they're, you know, as a kid growing up, I would hear in my science class on occasion that if the sun supernovaed, right, it would take us eight minutes and 20 seconds before we even felt the effects or even see the supernova in the sky. So there is some sort of time dilation going on there. So time travel is happening all the time. There are some scientists now. The reason why I'm getting into time travel is because there's actually some new information on time travel that I'm about to share with you. The universe, time travel paradox, the universe will cease to exist if you see yourself. That's another theory of time travel. So you've probably seen time travel movies before in which you go, the individual goes back in time and they're like, oh, I can't, do not see yourself. Do not interact with your younger self. It will create a paradox and the universe as we know it will cease to exist. First of all, that was just done completely for dramatic effects. So it's not like those, those studios were looking into the science. So, but however, a lot of people have this belief now, and it's actually shared within scientific community, something called the grandfather complex. Do not see yourself like, if do not go back in time, you see yourself, timelines will collapse and all the universe will collapse. So new studies are showing that this is probably not true. Here is some science, some research that came out back in September of 2020. So only like five months ago. And I'm going to read a little bit from this. Okay, say you traveled in time and attempted to stop the current world situation from being exposed to this thing. However, if you stop that individual from becoming infected, that would eliminate the motivation for you to go back and stop the pandemic in the first place. So that includes a paradox right there. It's an inconsistency. So if you go back and stop something, the whole purpose of you even going there in the first place no longer exists and everything could collapse as we know it. 
Or we have the grandfather paradox in which a time traveler kills their own grandfather in the process of preventing the time travel's birth, the time traveler's birth in the first place. So the logical paradox has given researchers a headache in part because according to Einstein's theory of general relativity, closed timeline, timeline curves are possible. But these researchers say that a paradox wouldn't necessarily exist because events would adjust themselves. So I'm just gonna show you these two articles and comment on here right, right now. So what they're doing through their research, including research with the hydrogen collider um, in Geneva, is that they're realizing or they believe that when you actually go back in time, every, all the things that occur, any issues or any situations that you shift and change will actually automatically correct themselves to have the same outcome. Say you go back in time and then you stop Kennedy, Kennedy from being assassinated. What happens in the universe is that the universe does not want to be, well, create a paradox in that moment. So all these other elements will shift in order to bring the same outcome to the timeline that you're at. So this is now what researchers are saying in regards to their research for time travel. Yeah, time, time is a linear phenomena, but then if we go into different dimensions where there's another element of time, time could still exist, but maybe it's a little more fluid or maybe there are three points of time rather than just having two components. All right, everybody, I want to officially welcome you to your home galaxy, the Milky Way. Our galaxy, the Milky Way, is speeding through space and Earth, traveling through space at 1.3 million miles per hour. We are going 25 miles per second closer to the center of the Milky Way galaxy. And as some of you may know, in the center of our galaxy is a supermassive black hole. We're also traveling alongside our local cluster of stars, 375 miles a second toward what is known as the Virgo cluster, an enormous collection of galaxies 45 million light years away. And in our galaxy, we see all these beautiful patterns that seem to be common, not just on Earth and even to the finite of the, or, or, or the infinitesimal pieces of our mitosis and our cells and how our cells divide, but we see the same geometry throughout the cosmos. So there's some sort of design going on here, some sort of laws that it seems that creation is actually following. And you can see here, we have the Milky Way galaxy that is following the Fibonacci spiral, but then there are other types of galaxies. The spiral galaxy is one of the most common forms of galaxies that there are, but there are other galaxies that seem to go by different ways, um, different geometrical shapes, or even maybe have different elements of physics that are playing out there. And this meme here on the left that many have probably seen is one that really shows the as above, so below. We have, of course, the sacred geometry starting at the circle to the Vesca Pisces, to the seed of life, to the flower of life. Then we have the cosmos and how the cosmos are created and nebula and galaxies are created. And then we have mitosis. You can see that they're all very similar. So what is actually occurring on the grand scale on the macro scale in the universe through the creation of galaxies and nebula and nebula and whatever is the same thing that is happening on the micro level within our own bodies and how all physical matter is being created. But the, the, the part that I'm really excited about is the fact that this sacred geometry has been utilized by ancient civilizations for years. And we're now realizing the sacred geometry is a representation of the division of our cells and also the creation of universe and galaxy, right? So these individuals that were using this artwork maybe had some sort of connection or understanding of these components already and created beautiful art in order to express it. This right here is a, a snapshot, an intersection of the Milky Way galaxy. So this line that we see right here in the center is actually the photon belt, which is the high concentration of ether within our galaxy, right? So the milk of the Milky Way galaxy is this right here. Humans um, and the trajectory of our planet is right here. You see the, the line that's going all the way down up above. So not only are we going and rotating, and let me show you with my hands here. Not only are we rotating around our Milky Way galaxy, but we're also going around in spirals around that. So that we have multiple rotations going on, right? So we're going, here's the Milky Way, this core and center. We're going all the way around. And then we're also going 